What's up YouTube? Welcome back. Um, so I got a an email um, in regards to the last video I did about the autograph blaster. So um, they weren't rude but they didn't actually listen to what I said in the video or read my description. So I'm going to answer them with a little dose of sarcasm and based on their email, I assume they wanted me to answer for my mistakes in a video, I think. So, I gotta be honest, I was a bit confused with your email because you wanted to remain anonymous, yet you used your wife's account to comment. Um, I'm not sure you fully understand how the on the online thing works, but um, I think I did you a solid by removing your comment, um, although I have a very strong suspicion that the email is from one of you, which I'm flattered, but I'll play along. So, uh, yes, the, uh, the box states autograph odds. Um, I said that the relic card, the patch card, the congratulations, you just bought a blaster card, uh, that comes in the white pack can be autographed. Um, so that is what the autograph odds are for on the box. So, sorry if I did not make that clear. Uh, yes, you're right. You can pull autographs from Topps Blasters. Uh, and yes, I did pull one from an Archives Blaster a while back. Um, which, by the way, thank you for remembering and watching the video. Again, I was talking about Flagship from 2020 and newer. Um, congrats, by the way, on your Chrome Blaster auto pull. Um, I hope you got a good one. And the number three, um, Know Your Facts Girl was not intended to be rude. I just think she's funny. She's a character played by a comedian. All I'm saying is... Which was in the description. Um, I actually would have loved for there to have been an auto in one of the packs because that would have just made the video so much funnier. Um, and I only mentioned the autograph thing because I've seen it brought up many times on Reddit and decided to mention it here. Uh, I wasn't saying that blasters are horrible. Um, I'm not saying it's 100% fact that you can't pull an auto from those packs. Um, I, I don't even really care about autos that, that much. But the pack odds, the packs don't have odds for an auto on them. So I take that for what you will. Um, I could be wrong. I don't expect anyone to trust everything I say. Um, as I've gotten older, I've learned not to trust everything. The older I get, I don't even trust farts. So, especially after taco night. So, now that you know your facts, we are going to turn this bad boy around and open my favorite product. <clears throat> so, I'm sure most of you have seen this by now, but this is the 2021 Heritage, bringing back the 1972 Topps design, which is, as a kid, I didn't like it, but it has really become one of my favorite designs um, of the vintage. Um, I just, I think it's so cool. Um, so, 72 design, 72 cards per box. Um, so a big shout out to Shane of Oddball Cards who gave me the heads up that this was on Target's website. Um, unfortunately, they were sold out, but we all know Shane has a time machine, so he did me a solid and here we are. My mother always said you don't have to be friends with everyone, but if someone has a time machine, then you're an idiot if you're not friends with them. So, Shane's a cool dude. That would be totally be his friend anyway. And by the way, as the box says, you you can pull autographs from Heritage Blasters. No, you're fine. So, now I've not seen any Hainers or Fat Packs yet, but 
Unlike flagship, I do think blasters are the way to go with Heritage. Um, and I'm really hoping we see some of those mega boxes for 2021 because those were sweet. Uh, who's the first one we're going to see? Yeah, I don't even really know the checklist to answer that question. Jacob deGrom. Um, so, yeah, I really love this year's design. Um, obviously, it's based off the 72 design. We we all knew what was coming. Um, I like 71, too. I think 71 has that. I meant to bring a 71 out here, but we all know what it looks like. I think... 71 has that kind of James Bond tuxedo look to it, and 72 is like that John Travolta, you know, disco look. I know that movie was much later than 72, but I, I don't know of a disco movie from 72. So, Justin Smoke, um, shout out to Bud Stoney. Uh, he should have been a short print, 420. That would have just made it so much better. Uh, we got our in action Nate Pearson rookie card. Um, this is the insert and looks like a Mike Trout puzzle piece. Um, so the one thing I can't figure out with the uh, low numbers is there's we got the Mike Trout Luke Voigt pretty cool home run leaders card. Um, the one thing I I can't figure out with the heritage is why low number always has rookie only combo cards or it's the comp the rookie card is part of an insert um, I know people have mentioned that it's to pay homage or tribute or whatever to the old designs but um, you know I get that but they had plenty of single player rookies in these products back then as well. Um, I can't think of a 72 rookie, but I think uh, I know for a fact Bly Levin has a, a rookie in 71, which is I think card number 25. Um, again, I don't want to be throwing out. There's a Mount Castle in action rookie. That's pretty cool. Don't want to be Lewis Robert, Gold Cup. So that's a pretty sweet one. And we got a, we'll set the, the Mount Castle back there as well. And let's go ahead and do the Nate Pearson. Shout out to Alex of Jay's opening or Jay's mix. I'm uh, totally butchering it. I'm sorry, Alex. I done forgot what I was saying. Oh, yeah. I know Bly Levin has a rookie in 71, and I'm pretty sure it is card number 25. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure card number 25 is a low number card, so I'm just... I don't know. I guess they just have us chasing the, the short print variations of the rookie cards. Um, is my guess. I'm not sure. Joe Adele. Shout out to Hedgehog, who is a Joe Adele collector. Atari releases Pong. Sweet. That is, that is awesome. Atari brings back a lot of memories. I remember playing Pong. And there's a Ricky Stars card. Not too bad. So yeah, um, I don't know. I just feel like there could be a few single player base Ricky cards. Sixto Sanchez, Jesus Sanchez, and we got a Glaber. That is sweet. Man, I'm digging this box. I also like the fact that the cards aren't damaged. Of course, I thought that when I opened 2021 for the first time. And they were pretty banged up. A Glaber in action. Welcome to the Glaberhood. 
And sweet Roberto Clemente. That's pretty cool. Shout out to Rudog and Lou Rock TV. So I'd also like to mention that I'm thinking of a name change. Um, well, I suppose it would be a name addition. Um, I was thinking of something like Hedgehog's Cards and Cars or something like that. Uh, I'd also like to do a, a new Instagram account um, that will kind of be the, the same name or a similar name to the, the channel name. Um, Hedgehogs, Cards, and Cars sounds like it needs something else. I'm not sure what it would be. Um, and I'm actually thinking the Instagram may be different. Um, I was thinking of Hedgehoppers, Cars, and Cars, which is kind of a little tribute to my uncle in a way. Uh, rookie stars. I've not heard of those people. Actually, I've heard of the Ryan guy. Aaron Judge. Sweet. So, as I said before, I'd like to add some automotive stuff, not necessarily mine. Um, you know, some of you may like it, some of you may not. As Angry Old Man always says, stick around and you might like something later. Um, it's probably not exactly how he says it, but you get the point. Casey Mize, an action rookie. And we got rookie stars, the White Sox. So. Yeah, Corey Taylor is one of my favorite musicians, but do I like all of his stuff? Um, actually, I might, so bad example. Pearl Jam is awesome, but do I like every song of theirs? Nope, but they are still one of my favorites. So my family and friends could care less about cards or cars, so I figure I can do the family stuff on the Instagram and the fun stuff on another Instagram. Didn't we already get a Kyle Schwarber in action? I guess that sounded wrong about the, the family. Um, you know, family is the funnest, but the hobby stuff on a separate Instagram is what I meant. Um, so, as usual, I am horrible about a recap. I meant to totally set the rookies on one side and then set the inserts on another. Um... Oh, we got, um, damn, that, that's a good way to get damage cards. Um, we got the Clemente Day here, the Aaron Judge, and the Glaber, and a couple of actions. Lewis Robert, I assume, is going to be everybody's favorite card. Um, which is pretty cool. I don't know why these are sitting over here. Well, anyway, um, oh yeah, I wanted to, to mention... Um, one thing I really enjoy from other, other people's videos is blaster battles. Um, I don't want to invite myself into a battle, but if anyone is interested, I'm all for it. Um, I figure we're all gamblers here, so I like the idea of losing cards, but also winning cards. I like the idea of picking a safe card though, because let's be honest, if I pull a trout super fractor or something like that, I don't care who you are, who you are, we will literally be battling over the fact that I'm not gonna give it to you. So I think one safe card and the winner can take all the other cards or the winner can take only what they want. Um, that way you're not left with a bunch of heritage base that you don't care about. Um, and it might save on shipping. Also, if there's a kid in the battle, I figure we can make it so that the kid can win, but they can't lose. That way, you know, I would feel bad taking cards from a kid, unless it's a Trout Super Fractor. I'd still feel bad, but I'd, I'd still take it. 
Or if you already have rules established, I'm cool with that as long as it involves a safe card. Um, I like gambling, but I like to, I don't want to lose a cool card. Um, so anyways, that is the video. Have a good day.